Good afternoon. Thanks for joining me today to brief everybody on COVID-19. On the call today and available for questions is Director Woodard, uh, Director Mike Bruno with JSO, Fire Chief Powers, Jacksonville Fire and Rescue, and Director Jordan Ellsbury from my administration, which can take some specific questions as it relates to essential and non-essential businesses as he's been handling those questions internally. Uh, I just want to, uh, had a lot of action the last few days, so we're going to keep this uh, this, these briefings brief and then take questions so you can get questions answered for the people of Jacksonville. I just want to take a moment to say that uh, this morning when I was out, I saw a handful of uh, firefighters uh, that were getting some food and it made me think about uh, what should be obvious, but that is all of the folks that are putting themselves out there for us every day while this virus uh, is lurking. Um, firefighters, police officers, folks in grocery stores, folks that pick up our garbage. Um, imagine being an ER nurse and person comes in with a cough. So I just wanna take a moment to say thank you to all of you uh, for being on the front lines of uh, this battle while we all work to flatten the curve. My Safer at Home Executive Order takes effect tonight at 12.01 a.m. This order allows essential businesses to continue to operate in Duval County and urges citizens to stay in their homes except for critical and essential needs. As I said yesterday, this does not mean you can't go for a walk, a run, or a bike ride. Activities like these are still permitted. I would just ask you uh, to practice social distancing, keep your distance, um, wash your hands. These are all the CDC guidelines that we should all be following. This is going to be a tough 30 days in many ways for uh, all of us here in Jacksonville. Your home, your routines have been disrupted. Uh, but if we do this and continue to flatten the curve, we'll come out of this quicker and do everything that we can uh, to get people back to work, uh, our children learning, and get back into the normal routines to the extent that we can. Uh, update on testing, we have 271 cases. Uh, what, what I wanna say about the testing is uh, we expect to continue to see spikes in the testing. Uh, there's also been five to eight day waits. So batches of tests as they come back, you're going to see moments where you have 30, 40, 50, maybe even more uh, what appear to be new positives overnight. Those aren't new positives. Those are people that were tested five, six, seven, eight days ago and were carrying this even before then. The, the, a, a very relevant number to look at is the percent of positives based on the total tests. Our percent of pot, so total people tested, what's the percent of those that come back positive? Ours is consistently trending less than 7%. That's the lowest percentage in any major metropolitan area in the state of Florida. And um, so what we need to do is keep flat, working to flatten the curve and all of that's us doing our part to keep those numbers low which means we're stopping the spread. Remember, this, this disease doesn't spread itself. People spread it from one person to another. For those businesses that can remain open under a safer at home order, please remember that all other executive orders from my office remain in effect. If your employees can perform their job duties from home, let them do so. Take proper safety precautions and social distancing measures. Had many questions about churches. Can they hold services? While churches are considered essential, prior executive orders apply. You, and, and that includes you cannot have more than 50 people in attendance and they must be six feet apart. Virtual church, church services or radio broadcasts are the safest option during this time. A full list of businesses that can remain open are listed in the executive order, which is posted at www.jacksready.com jacksready.com backslash virus. Duval County Public Schools has asked me to remind families they will continue to provide meals 
breakfast, lunch, and dinner to students and families in need. Breakfast and lunch are available at Duval County Public School locations. Dinner will be provided at 71 select school locations. A list is available at duvalschools.org. I spoke to Dr. Green, our superintendent, last night. Uh, we are just having a personal call, and uh, she reminded me of the disruption of normal life of the students, of our children, young men and women in Jacksonville. And we specifically had a conversation about our high school seniors, and, and it reminded me of the importance of those years, obviously the academic piece, but the life experiences that many of these young, that these young men and women are missing out on right now. Their spring sports, prom, um, so many of the things that are memories for all of us as adults. And just wanna take a moment to express to all of our school children that lives have been totally flipped upside down. Um, your school officials care for you and about you, your city cares for you and about you. And uh, it's not lost on us and lost on me that seniors are missing uh, these life-shaping experiences. In regard to a tweet I sent last night regarding cru cruise ships, I wanna take a moment to address that. News reports were speculating yesterday that a ship with close to 200 passengers exhibiting symptoms of COVID-19 could be headed to any port city on Florida's east coast, including Jacksonville. Based on those reports, I called uh, the head of our port and made other calls of folks that would have knowledge of ships coming into our port. And I had not been contacted. Those officials had not been contacted. So we're hearing potential credible reports and no one is talking to those in this, in this city that are in leadership positions. Our city is caring and compassionate. My tweet was simply expressing on the front end, since no one has contacted us, that in a, while we demonstrate our compassion, we need to have an absolute guarantee that federal, state, and local resources will be coordinated to ensure the safety of our local community. We cannot have a cruise ship full of COVID-19 patients coming into the city without understanding and have agreed upon protocols in place to care for those passengers and protect our citizens. And that can only happen through communication and coordination. I know these are stressful and painful times for many in our community. And I want us to all be mindful to care for one another. I'm gonna encourage you again to make that seven o'clock call. We're hashtag make that call at seven o'clock. It's been so rewarding for me to make those calls and receive those calls and to, to hear many of your stories on social media, how you're connecting with family, friends, and maybe even people you haven't connected with in a while. Uh, I wanna remind you that during this time, uh, find a routine at home. Uh, I know it can be hard to get up in the morning because your schedule's disrupted and there's so much uncertainty. Believe me, speaking from personal experience, I know these are, very, very stressful times, uh, but get up, set a routine, get some chores, take a walk, just do something, It'll, you'll be better for it. With that, we'll take questions. Jim with WJXT. Mayor, two questions on testing. Uh, you talked about the 7%. Does that include lot J testing? Because still we're getting numerous calls of people not getting those results that were there even on the first day. Do you know if that includes, that, go ahead. That, inclu that includes all results that come from the Department of Health and all testing sites send their results to the Department of Health. So the answer would be yes. So you, very That's good. An aggregate number of all, of all tests performed. Also, I saw too, are you in demolition on Hart Bridge tomorrow? Is that going to affect the the lines there at Lot J? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. Uh, Hart Bridge demolition begins tomorrow, and they're saying detours in place, and it could be in front of the stadium area. What impact will that have on Lot J? Experts will they understand that's coming, so they'll work traffic flow. Our, 
Jacksonville Sheriff's Office and those that coordinate with them will, will handle that. They'll be on the front end of that. Sky with WJCT. Hey, how's it going, Mayor? I have a, a couple questions. Uh, first off, uh, just regarding uh, public pools and city pools, wondering if we can get some specific on that, including water sports on open waters. And um, we also got a press release from PGA North Florida that said that uh, the governor's executive order makes golf an essential activity. Is that something that you think should be going on in Duval County? And does your executive order uh, have anything to cancel that out or close um, these golf courses? My executive order does have a piece in it that allows for outdoor recreational activity if you're practicing social distancing, which can be done on a golf course. So it would, it would be expected that that's practiced one person to a cart. You don't touch things that other people touch, et cetera. And with First Coast News. There. Um, we gotten some questions from our viewers about food that's available at convenience stores, um, concerns that that is a vector for disease. Um, also, uh, on a different question, we've also heard about some stores where there have been a number of reported illnesses or people who've you know, been tested positive for the virus. Um, and I'm wondering if you think that those places, if the people are handling food in any way, if they have any obligation to let the public know if there's been many cases diagnosed at a certain facility or a certain, say, grocery store. I'll let Director Woodard take those two questions on. But let me say this in terms of uh, handling packaged food and whatnot at, at convenience stores. Uh, you should always wash your hands. If you go in and pick something up, uh, go home or get your wipes, wash your hands, wipe the product that you're carrying um, uh, every single time, uh, Director Woodard. Yes, I think we need to consider the, really the big picture there that you're also handling products at a grocery store, but we believe that people are going to follow all the rules uh, when they're doing that. The social distancing, even in a convenience store, is important. Uh, as far as the food production, uh, the Department of Health would be monitoring any individual who had tested positive, and they do follow up to ensure that those people are told to uh, uh, quarantine and to take other appropriate actions. Lou with First Coast News. Hey, Mayor, thank you. Uh, you know, Ann kind of covered uh, a big question I have. I just wonder what obligation would fall on a bigger business to let folks know we have positives, but that's kind of covered. Um, one of the uh, essentials that's covered on the list are people who are contractors, and that, that covers a wide range of things in, in construction projects as well. Um, is that any and all uh, type of contractor or any and all type of construction that's going on, or are these just big type things or even residential? So I'm going to pass that to Jordan Ellsbury. He is intergovernmental affairs in my office and has been working with businesses and uh, our city lawyers uh, to determine who falls under those guidelines. So Jordan? Uh, hey, Lou, uh, to address the question and really the premise of it, uh, the governor established these essential businesses in his executive order released yesterday that goes into effect the same time that ours does uh, tomorrow at 12 a.m. But uh, the answer to your question is yes, um, they do, whether it's residential, whether it's commercial, outside construction sites, uh, architectural firms, engineering firms are considered essential and will continue to operate. Page with Action News. Hey there, thank you. I've got uh, three questions. Can you hear me all right? We can. Uh, first question, how will you handle enforcement of this executive order moving forward after midnight tonight? Uh, the second, have you heard any discussion of false negatives of the COVID-19 tests? And the last one is, an, is, is a personal one for you. Have you seen, can you name one positive unintended consequence of all this? Um, I'm gonna, I'll answer the last question then I'll turn the other two to JSO and Emergency Operations Center. Uh, there certainly are, well, this 
I mean, this virus that is, um, it's like a ghost, right? We don't, you don't see it coming. Um, people are walking around potentially asymptomatic and can spread it. So it's, the economy's been disrupted. Lives have been wrecked economically. We've had deaths. Family have had to experience deaths. People have to die alone. Um, that's a, uh, that's pretty tough stuff. So I hesitate to say positive silver lining um, because there's people right now that uh, personally may be struggling to have something to look forward to or find any positive in this because of the personal destruction. So, but I would say the way the community is uh, most people are doing their part to flatten the curve. I believe that because they care about each other. And um, anecdotally, it seems that people are connecting with each other through the phone calls, um, the Zoom. And so maybe we come out of this kinder, gentler, uh, slower to attack each other verbally and uh, see some signs of that happening. With that, I'll probably need to repeat the two questions because I spoke for so long. So uh, Director Bruno and Woodard can answer the first two questions. So Paige, to answer your question in regards to enforcement, uh, the Sheriff met uh, with his staff earlier today in a video conference and we talked about uh, some of the, the challenges within the community uh, and, and what the, an appropriate response is uh, for our officers as they handle them. Um, obviously, in, in certain situations, um, you, we've discussed block parties and other things. You know, our, our focus is, is to talk with the organizers of, of, uh, of the events um, to get their compliance even before. Um, we're monitoring social media and other uh, platforms to try to learn about these events as much as we can in advance. Uh, there was one scheduled um, a few weeks from now, and so we were able to reach out to the organizers. We worked with the uh, council people, um, and, and those conversations were very successful to uh, curb that event before it even began. So, But we've talked about enforcement opportunities, uh, and, and we, have a, we have a plan moving forward. Um, I will say, by and large, the community is compliant and, and it really boils down to the respect that we have for each other and the responsibility that we all share to this community. So um, by working together, we'll flatten that curve. Uh, regarding the uh, false positives for the test, uh, and as a footnote, we've gone over 3,000 tests uh, now at Lot J this morning. Uh, we're not aware of any false positive information or suggestion of that. When people are tested, uh, they're all instructed to self-quarantine. And even after they get the test results back, uh, it's important for people to uh, adhere to the social distancing. But uh, no indications of false positives that we're aware of. There's really only one test that's given, not aware of any subsequent, twist, subsequent test that would prove that out. Mike with the Daily Record. Yes, hi, Mayor. Um, two questions. Uh, one in regard to uh, the uh, the cruise ships. You said that uh, that that the uh, state officials and the cruise ships uh, 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 companies were not communicating locally with, um, with 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 the city. When you spoke with the port authority, did they give you an indication of what the possibility is that that, that those cruise liners would request to dock in Jacksonville? And um, and then the second question is. Uh, um, in regard to the small business loan program, uh, uh, why um, why uh, is the city uh, uh, decided just to partner with one single uh, organization? Um, why not uh, you know why not consider uh, possibly expanding the program to include other financial institutions with the liquidity to manage it? Um, there's been no contact with anyone uh, at our port. As of as of last night, no one had contacted uh, our Jacksport leadership or commanding officer or anyone around them at Mayport. 
Uh, we had heard yesterday, though, there were actually there was something in print suggest, suggested Jacksonville could be a place, and we were hearing rumors circulating. So uh, the the ask would be if people just need to be in touch with uh, local leadership, my office, the port, uh, and uh, Mayport. Uh, Jordan Ellsbury, I'll let you take the question on small business. Yeah, Mike, as it relates to the partnership with ViStar, ViStar is a longstanding partner with the city of Jacksonville as well as a community brand. But the reality is ViStar had $50 million prepared and working capital to put to work for small business loans. Uh, they approached us. We approached them to have conversations about how we could be a part of that. But ultimately, ViStar has the capacity to put the capital to work ASAP, which is what, quite frankly, small businesses need at this moment. Jamarlo, Action News. Hey, Mayor. So what will happen? What are the uh, the consequences if someone violates the, the safer at home order? And also for folks who are considered essential, uh, are they required to have like a piece of paper in their car? That sort of thing? Uh, the first part of the question, uh, violate the executive order. Uh, look, you could have the sheriff's office will enforce if necessary. Uh, clearly, we don't want to do that. And I, I believe that, that by and large, the people of this city are going to do the right thing and are going to stay at home, move around when it's essential, and practice uh, social distancing. The second part of the question was, uh, basically, if people who are considered essential, do, are they required to have some type of paper inside their car? No, you don't. You don't have to have documentation, but uh, clearly if somebody is, appears to be violating that and it's reported, that report will be assessed and then a follow-up by code enforcement or JSO will be determined at that time. Christopher Hong, Florida Times Union. Hey, Mayor, I have three questions. Um, two are for you, and then one would be for the sheriff. Um, first, about the um, the ViStar lending program. Do you know when the uh, legislation is going to be ready to be introduced? And um, if you guys have a copy, uh, could you distribute it to the press? Uh, the second question would be, you know, has your office received any models showing, um, you know, what like a potential outbreak in Duval County would look like? And, you know, when that would start to, you know, impact hospital capacity. And then the third question would be for the sheriff. Um, I've gotten several questions from readers who are just wondering if the beach closure would allow people to take their boats out of the inlet and access the surf through a boat um, to surf or swim or whatnot. Uh, I just wanted to see if um, you could provide clarity on that. Thank you. What was the second question? I heard the small business, then one for the sheriff. I'm going to flip the small business yeah, the one second to Jordan. I'll, what was the second one? The second question is, your, is the emergency management office or your office, do you guys have any models that show like what a local outbreak would look like in, in Duval County? Um, so the, I've talked to, I've not seen models. Um, and if, if, if anyone in my administration is looking at those and we have a public record, uh, we'll give them to you. If you've requested them, you'll get those. Um, but what I have done in terms of the models, I, so I do a, a scheduled call with all hospital leadership every week. And then I, uh, and during the day and the evenings, I call hospital leaders myself and I talk to them about the models. There's various models. Some hospitals are using a model. Other hospitals have combined a number of models. Um, and if you take on any number of the models, if you take a scenario and most of those models, I believe, um, I want to get out of my expertise here. Uh, some level of mitigation to no mitigation. And so that would demonstrate stress points at some point, uh, potentially in mid-April, start feeling them, uh, with peaks potentially in early May. Uh, but I, I can't say that conc conclusively. This is just in my discussions with those in, in healthcare leadership. Uh, but those are certainly driving the decisions that I started to make weeks ago about social distancing and started laying out executive orders to keep people safe. Uh, Jordan, I'll let you take the question on um, legislation and, and when it will be available. Um, 
Chris, to answer the question, uh, we plan on filing the legislation tomorrow. We're finalizing the agreement with ViStar today, and the attorneys are finalizing the drafting of the bill. So we plan to, final, uh, to file the bill tomorrow, um, and we expect council action Monday. Um, and obviously, the bill will be made public tomorrow once we finalize an agreement. I believe there was a question for Director Bruno. Yeah. So, Chris, this is Mike Bruno. I'm the Director for Patrol and Enforcement for the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. In regards to what you were referring to as the, uh, the uh, boat access, I, I know that the legislative piece limits some access points uh, for where people can get access to the waters, but it doesn't shut the waterways down, um, obviously. Um, and I know the mayor's talked about this before. You want to practice proper social distancing and, and you know, not congregate, congregate in groups. I know FWC has um, uh, making, made an effort there to uh, ensure compliance on our waterways as well as our marine unit. But the, the legislative bill in and of itself doesn't shut the waterways down. Jim with WJXT. Well, Mayor, I think there were a couple of things, particularly in your response to Chris over the models on that. You're saying mid-April, May, we could see the worst things here in Jacksonville. Is that what that is showing? And as the health department, I mean, we haven't seen them on, on these conference calls. Are you in touch with them every day? Uh, the health department is a part of our emergency operations team. And so, for example, uh, I believe I'll be on a call with them, I think today at some point. And then there's also other calls that happen with a smaller subsuit, subset of group of people uh, daily. Um, Jim, I'm not saying I've seen a model that says that, uh, that, that this virus is going to crush Duval County hospitals, Jacksonville hospitals. What I am saying is that in phone conversations with hospital leadership is there are certainly models that would show uh, bed capacity starting to fill up uh, sometime between mid-April and early May, maybe peaking in early May. Uh, and so that's a possibility based on models. That, that's at the same time, when we look at our percent of positives to, the, to total tested, uh, ours is consistently below 7%. In fact, it had a slight dip on the last, um, the last data point. That's a positive sign and, and might suggest, we don't know, but might suggest that the social distancing we started weeks ago is having an impact because if that percentage is higher, if it mirrors what you're seeing in some other parts of the state, that's when you start seeing uh, massive hospitalizations, et cetera. However, um, the hospitals and the city, the hospitals specifically, are, they're making contingency plans in the event they need to add beds, which is just a smart thing to do. It's, it's a good, smart, strategic plan. Sky with WJCT. Hey, Mayor. Uh, the, the New York Times just published a report, and it had uh, Duval County as number three in the nation where people will sh were still traveling in the county as of March 26th, which was last Thursday, Friday. That type area, around three miles per day. You're, you're quoted in that story. I think it was just based off of a press release that you had or, or, or something that you talked about before. I just wanted to get your reaction to that. Uh, does that shock you at all, or do you attribute it to anything? Um, it doesn't shock me. It's, you know, there's a reason the governor is taking the action he's taking on flights and, and, and vehicles coming into the state. Uh, we're, we're at the tip of the spear, if you will. You come into the state of Florida at certain points, you're here. Uh, there's a reason we took action with our hotels. Look, we, um, I love New Yorkers. I love New York. I love visiting New York. Uh, but we have right now, all of us, a responsibility to uh, stop the spread and uh, where people have been quarantined outside of our city and county, uh, we would ask that uh, they follow the orders of their local city and not come to ours. Um, uh, it's, it's just about taking care of each other. Lou, two more questions, Lou with First Coast News. Thank you, Mayor. I know uh, so much comes down to individual responsibility, and I understand that grocery stores are extraordinarily important and essential, but um, I, some folks have been calling nervous about just how many uh, people are in a specific grocery store and all the crowds. Is there any uh, plan or thought to uh, 
making these stores limit just how many people can come in at any given time? Does the 50 plus apply to that? I mean, some of them have more employees. I'm just curious about your thoughts on it. Um, I, you know, I, I, a practice that I think uh, is a suggestion that these stores could potentially put into place in practice is making their aisles one way and, t and making telling people then they come in, they need to be six feet apart. That way you don't have two people coming face to face and you have some distance and you don't have cra crowded aisles. Um, I know there are some grocery stores that have moved hours around to accommodate uh, people that have uh, potentially uh, immune systems that could be at risk. Uh, but I think, you know, we're always open to adding safety precautions in place. And I will uh, suggest to the grocery stores, not just on camera, that they take additional steps, including maybe one-way traffic in the aisles. Last question, Ellen with Jack's Business Journal. Hi, Mayor. Thank you for taking my question. I'm just curious, could you tell me what the city council response is to the ViStar partnership has been so far? And also, are you concerned at all about the financial burden that could pose for the city? Uh, city council, uh, look, we've got to work through the details with them, but very supportive of the idea that uh, we as a city and as a community, uh, my office and the city council are going to step up and recognize the, uh, the strain small businesses are feeling right now. Uh, and that strain directly affects working people because working people uh, work for many of these small businesses. Uh, the financial strain on the city, uh, well, I said yesterday, we are financially sound and strong. We've built up over $100 million in additional fund balance since I, four and a half years I've been in office. Uh, but this, the, the budgets in the years ahead are going to be incredibly difficult. If all this ended right now, the budget in the budgets in the years ahead, while I'm in office for sure, are going to be very difficult with difficult choices and reprioritizing things. However, we're not waking up today and this is over to now. So the economic impact is going to get worse. That's just the reality. But what we're going to have to do is have uh, budget priorities that are focused on people and needs and services uh, uh, for all of us. And uh, there are gonna be some really, really tough economic years, but we'll do what Jacksonville does, uh, we'll do what Duval County does, and uh, we'll come through this together. Uh, let me close with uh, Jim and, and Christopher both asked a question about the models. Um, there is, I've not, no one has shared a model with me that, that, that keeps me up at night. I'm not, I'm not afraid. Um, and I don't want people to be afraid. The models simply say hospitals could be stressed and it's, then there's different models. So it's reasonable for hospital leadership and city leadership to act on the possibility. And that is why you've heard discussions about the field hospital that is why our hospitals are prepared, if they have to, to uh, find additional bed space. If, if we do our part and keep the social distancing, uh, we'll, we will flatten the curve. That'll happen. And, and as I said before, uh, we may be having some of those impacts now. So let's, uh, let's just all do our part and uh, care about our friends, neighbors, all the people of Jacksonville and practice the things that we've asked you to practice. And, and, and I still see people shaking hands sometimes when I'm driving home. Uh, just, this is real. I mean, this is, this, is, this is transmitted. You get it on your hand, you touch your face, you, you're probably gonna get it. And then you're probably gonna pass it to somebody else. So wash your hands. If you cough or sneeze, cover your mouth, stay six feet away from people. If you're at a grocery store or a convenience store and someone approaches you, uh, it's not rude to do this. I dated this morning and say, excuse me, six feet. This has just got to be safe. It's just a gentle reminder. Thank you.